Well, hello everybody, it's uh, Richard here. It's uh, Saturday the 18th of um, April uh, and it's been an absolutely marvellous day today. We've had real sunshine and uh, what I call the first real day of uh, the spring. Uh, and uh, when I went for my run this morning, um, it was a real, you know, real pleasure um, to, uh, to get up earlier and go out and uh, really come back feeling really ex exhilarated. Anyway, um, uh, just to move on to uh, more uh, interesting things, um, here we have a retro radio. Um, now this um, this has got an interesting history. This uh, retro radio, making which looks a bit like, I suppose, one of those tombstone radio you used to get uh, in the early 20s and 30s, was actually uh, rescued from... Um, a skip at work, I tossed into the skip, and one Friday before I left work, I saw the, the corner of something which caught my eye and uh, went over to it, and there it was sitting there looking very sad, covered in mud and dust and that. And uh, so I brought it home, and that was about, must be over a year and a half ago, and it's been sitting in the corner of the workshop, and uh, I've uh, actually um, had a bit of a tidy up. So, and in the tidying up, I thought, well, I got a bit of a spare time this afternoon. The bench is clear, waiting for Mr. Grundig to come back to uh, have his uh, all his grease and other bits done and continue that little project. I'll have a look at this, and lo and behold, uh, three hours later, I'm still uh, fiddling with it. Well, it's uh, I wouldn't say it was the high end of retro radios, if there is such a thing as that. But uh, and so it's taken me quite a while to get the thing out of the case, um, and uh, so it's probably made in uh, a foreign land, actually, probably China or Taiwan and that, and uh, it's it's more reminiscent of a cheap transistor radio, and then the bits have just been inserted into this rather uh, well. I'll say, wouldn't I say it's unpleasant <laughs> case? Though it's not real wood, it's just fiberboard. If I turn this around, you can see, as you can see here, look, it's all sort of that fibre stuff. It took me absolutely ages to get the thing out because it was fitted in there. It has actually been screwed in. The bit I found most interesting, though, was the knobs that are on the front that, you know, that normally you push on to. Where are we? Let's get this in shot. Oops, there we go. You'd normally push these on to the radio they were stuck so i had to break the glue seals to get them off which didn't actually which took quite a bit of time really um and um so we've got this rather cheap little speaker here um and uh which uh, is what two watts it says on the back and then you've got this other circuit board and half the wires had broken off the, the obviously they use as little a solder as possible to stick everything together. They've used an amazing amount of glue. All this, I don't know if you can see here, but all this is glue. It's just glued. It's just like a splodge of glue to hold all the components and capacitors in there. The uh, front bit, the front panel, the sort of wavelength indicator or whatever you want to call it, that had fallen off. It was only literally double-sided sellotape. The um, uh, ferrous uh, rod which holds the aerial here that had, that was completely broken away so in the throwing it in the skip it obviously got damaged um, and then uh, uh, a lot of the contacts for the um, variable uh, capacitor here um, for getting the wavelength they'd all fallen off so I've had to I've had to solder those back on again as is this it's got one of these it's one of these that I think my friend River down in Sussex uh, was showcasing a while ago. It's one of these ones that has a cassette in the side. There's a, a slot in the side of the case and what you do you then um, slide it in. It's a bit like your, those old car cassette players um, from years ago that uh, ran in one direction. Now the, um, the good news is that it actually does work, would you believe? And uh, so I'm going to demonstrate that. I'm going to put the radio on. It does make a funny old buzzing sound. I've got it hooked up, I don't know if you notice here, but I've got it hooked up to an aerial with a capacitor there just to strengthen the signal, one of these things I found a while ago. And so I'm going to just switch it on, it's plugged in, so it's got this really really cheap mains transformer here, and then there's a pilot light 
which is supposed to illuminate the main um, wavelength indicator. And I'm go I've actually found a replacement that's blown. And I've got one here. Look, I'm going to use the same thing. I've had these ones kicking about on that. So, and uh, so I mean, it's it's interesting that uh, expectations with this have probably been quite high. It probably didn't. It probably cost quite a bit of money actually in its day. I don't know what. I can't find a year on this. But I mean, the, these retro things they turn up on eBay, uh, and uh, you know, I tend to call them crappograms because they literally are very. But this one hasn't got a bad tone, so I thought it was worth investing a bit of my time. Anyway, here we go. Downloading is a kind of an ugly word, anyways. Yeah. Mm. Keep the door closed. If I touch uh, here, it gets worse. <laughs> but uh, but if I know, touch the transformer, obviously it needs earthing. The, 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 the music business that I began with. So we go to uh, Radio 4. <laughs> so if I just turn that off, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just play the cassette. Now, the cassette player, I thought, well, this thing won't work at all. It's bound to have gone comp fat at some stage. But in fact, it actually does. I've cleaned it up, cleaned the heads up, cleaned all the mechanism up. I haven't ordered anything yet, which I will do. And then I've demagnetized, uh, degaussed uh, the heads. And uh, I'm just going to play it. The only cassette I've got around in the workshop here is actually one that's... Uh, has actually got uh, the national anthem on. So those of you uh, who uh, are nationalists will enjoy this, and uh, those friends in America, well, here we go. Let's see what happens. God save the Queen. I'm sure Her Majesty won't mind me using her as a test, her song as a test uh, as, uh, for this. But you can see that it obviously only runs in one, runs in one direction, and um, the belt's okay. I thought it was a bit slacky, and it's got this little tiny engine here. Um, that's not a bad sound, really. That's tone control. And then the, the other feature is you can run it forward by just switching it forward like that. And that puts the puts the motor into full flow. But of course you can't rewind it, so you'd have to play the other side and then, you know, um, play it back again, I suppose. I mean, the only danger with these are, of course, they could get quite slack on the spools, because normally a cassette player will have a... There we go. And then it normally turns itself off at this stage. There we go. It switches itself back to radio. Started a phone relationship with him. Anyway, I'll let you know how I get on when I'm trying to put it back into the uh, into its case there. So the other thing I thought I'd just mention to you is that some time ago I was singing the praises of the uh, gold collection uh, CDs uh, because they were actually very good and uh, I I was looking at the Charlie Parker collection and uh, which I have to say is excellent the only thing I would say about the gold collection that these these brown case ones that you that come up quite a lot and the the CDs themselves are actually gold colored uh, is that in this case there is actually no sleeve notes at all you get on the back you get this one wonderful description of what the tunes are but it's very lacking in telling you a obviously it's Charlie Parker in there playing his alto sax but uh, but he doesn't actually say who's with him and what year the actual um, tune was actually recorded or where it was recorded and so I feel a little bit sort of uh, disappointed really I've got two other sets one is uh, Tommy Dolce, which clearly has got the sleeve notes indicating all the tunes and who's taking part. But also I've got 
uh, I also got uh, Duke Ellington as well. Again, doesn't seem to have much, much on the on the on the terms of sleeve notes. So, um, I'm actually going to be sort of investigating others. I mean, the most important thing is the sound. It's it's actually very good sound, and I might actually play you some of these tunes. Uh, just to demonstrate that in a later video, but uh, but anyway, I thought I'd mention it. Anyway, thanks for watching.